In this video, we're just going to do some practice proofs by mathematical induction. The focus in this course will be for summation formulas. So just a reminder of the summation formulas, which can all be proved by mathematical induction, and we're actually just going to prove that second one together. Um, but these are some of the very common formulas that you will see the summation of i, the summation of i squared, and the summation of i cubed. So we're going to take a look at the summation of i and do that proof using mathematical induction. For our first practice, we are going to prove that second formula from the screen that we just looked at, which is the summation as i goes from 1 to n of i is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. So as um, we did in our last video, remember our first step is to tell what p of n is going to be. So let p of n be that the summation as i goes from 1 to n of i is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. Then we're going to do our basis step. So our basis step is for the least element, which is 1. So our basis is to show that p of 1 holds. So get to that first rung of the ladder. So p of 1 says 1. That would be from the left side, the summation of 1 is equal to 1 times 1 plus 2, I'm sorry, 1 plus 1, which is 2, divided by 2. Well, on the left-hand side, I have 1, and on the right-hand side, I have 1 times 2, which is 2, divided by 2, which is 1. So the basis step holds. Then we're going to do the inductive step. And we start that with the inductive hypothesis. And the inductive hypothesis is basically a restatement of this, but we use k instead. So I'm going to assume that the summation as i goes from 1 to k of i is equal to k times k plus 1 divided by 2. And then remember, I always include that what to show or what to prove, and I need to show that the summation as i goes from 1 to k plus 1 of i is equal to, remember we're just replacing k's with k plus 1, so k plus 1, k plus 1 plus 1, which would be k plus 2, and then divided by 2. So that's what I'm trying to show. So when I do proof by induction, and there's different ways to go about it, but what I'm most comfortable with is always starting with the inductive hypothesis. So about 95% of the time, that is the method that I choose to take. So I'm going to take the summation as i goes from 1 to k of i is equal to k times k plus 1 divided by 2. So I can say that because I'm assuming this is true by the inductive hypothesis. And we all know by the laws of math, as long as I'm adding the exact same thing to each side of an equation, the equation will remain true. So what I want to do is I want to turn the left-hand side into this. So how can I make that the summation as i goes from 1 to k plus 1 of i? Well, I already have it all the way up to k, so if I add k plus 1 to that, then the left-hand side becomes the summation as i goes from 1 to k plus 1 of i, which is what I want, because I've taken all the way up to k, think about this 1, 2, so on, to k, and then I've added k plus 1, so I can rewrite it as the summation as i goes from 1 to k plus 1 of i. Now, whatever I've added to the left side, I want to add the exact same thing to the right side. The only thing I'm going to do different, which isn't going to change it, is because I now need to add that to a fraction with 2 as a denominator, I'm going to take 2 uh, and basically make it a fraction. So I'm going to multiply by 2 on the top and divide by 2 on the bottom, which of course means the fraction is exactly the same. So now what I have is I have k times k plus 1 plus 2 times k plus 1. Now, you could multiply that out. You would get k squared plus k and then plus 2k and then plus 2 by foiling it out. Or we can take a look at the fact that we have 
here and here a common factor of k plus 1. So I can take out the common factor of k plus 1, and that leaves me with k plus 2, and then divided by 2. Well, did I show what I wanted to show? Yes, I did. So I have proved this. Again, I would include that statement because I've shown the basis and inductive steps are true. Uh, we can say that P of n is true for all n greater than or equal to 1. Let's look at another proof now. And in this one, we are trying to prove a summation uh, that's not one of our normal summation formulas, but we're saying the summation as i goes from 1 to n of 1 over i times i plus 1 is equal to n over n plus 1. So again, just to give us a sense of what we're looking at here, if n is 1, I have 1 over 1 times 1 plus 1, which is 1 times 2. If n is 2, I've got 1 over 2 times 2 plus 1, which is 3. If n is 3, I've got 1 over 3 times 4. And essentially we're saying that that's going, the sum is going to be equal to, again, I just went up to 3. So this would be 3 over 4. So that's essentially what this is saying. So I'm just showing you up through 3 because I don't want to just keep doing that. Um, and of course, we could do the math and show that this is true. Um, this would be 1 over 2, and this would be 1 over 6, and this would be 1 over 12. And in order to that, add those together, I could call this instead 2 twelfths, and I could call this instead 6 twelfths. So 6 plus 2 plus 1 is 9 twelfths, and 9 twelfths is in fact equal to 3 fourths. So we can see that we've basically shown that n of 3 is true, and that's all we've shown. But that's not really part of the proof. I just wanted to make sure you understood the formula. So remember, the proof starts with let p of n be the statement, the summation as i goes from 1 to n of 1 over i times i plus 1 is equal to n over n plus 1. And then we're going to show our basis step. Our basis step is to show that p of 1 is true. Again, 1, because that's the first value. So p of 1 says that 1 over 1 times 1 plus 1 is going to be equal to 1 over 1 plus 1. Well, on the left side, I have 1 over 2. And on the right side, I have 1 over 2 and that in fact is true. So now let's look at our inductive step. We're going to start with our inductive hypothesis that assumes that the summation as i goes from 1 to k of 1 over i times i plus 1 is equal to k over k plus 1. So we're assuming that that is true and now we have to prove that if I add 1 to k, so that makes this k plus 1, I will get k plus 1 over k plus 1 plus 1, or k plus 2. So that's what I need to show. So how am I going to do that? Again, I like to start with the inductive hypothesis. So I know that the summation as i goes from 1 to k, based on my inductive hypothesis, of 1 over i times i plus 1 is in fact equal to k over k plus 1. Now, what am I going to add to the each side that's the same that would make the left-hand side turn into what I want right here? Well, again, I would add 1 over this guy would be k plus 1, this guy would be k plus 1 plus 1, so k plus 2. Now, I'm going to add that to each side. On the left-hand side, the whole purpose of doing that is that now, because I've written this fraction in the correct form, 
all of this combined together turns into the summation as i goes from 1 to k plus 1 of 1 over i and i plus 1. So again, I've done that specifically so that the left-hand side would now be the summation of exactly what I want it to be. On the right-hand side, I now need to add these together. Now, we're all smart enough to know that if you're going to add fractions, you need to have a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply that first fraction by k plus 2 in both the numerator and denominator. So what does that give me? That gives me k squared plus 2k and then plus 1. And that's all over k plus 1, k plus 2. Which, if I factor, I'm kind of running out of room here, so I apologize. If I factor, that gives me um, k plus 1, k plus 1, or k plus 1 squared. Again, k plus 1, k plus 2 on my denominator. Whoops. And then by simplifying, I am left with k plus 1 over k plus 2. And that's what I wanted it to be. So again, I would say because I've shown that the basis and inductive steps are true, we can say that p of n is true for all n greater than or equal to 1. For our last example in this video, we're actually going to conjecture a formula first uh, and then prove that it is true using mathematical induction. So in this case, they've just given me a sequence, 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus so on and so forth. We can see that each of those values is 1 over 2 to the n. So this is 1 over 2 to the first, which is 2, 1 over 2 squared, which is 4, 2 to the third, which is 8, and so forth. They're saying, what is the sum? of that sequence for different values of n. So essentially what they're saying is go ahead and find what happens when n is 1, when n is 2, when n is 3, and try to come up with a pattern based on the value of n. So we want to be able to plug in n and find the sum. So for if n is 1, that would be 1 over 2. And I'm not adding anything to that because there's just one value. For n equals 2, that would be 1 half plus 1 over 2 squared, which is 4. And if I add that together, again, that would be 2 fourths, so that gives me 3 fourths. For n is 3, that would be 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth. Again, adding those together, that's 4 eighths, 2 eighths, total of 7 eighths. So you can do as many as you need in order to find the formula. And what looks like is happening here is the denominator is in fact two to the n, but the numerator looks to be just one less than that. So I'm going to write that as two to the n minus one. So that is my conjecture, is that the summation as i goes from one to n of one over two to the i is equal to 2 to the n minus 1 and then over 2 to the n. Now, if you were doing this for me, you would not erase any of your work. I'm going to erase it because I'm dealing with a limited space here. So we're going to leave it just like that. And we're going to begin our proof. Our proof says, let P of N be the statement that the summation as I goes from one to N of one over two to the I is equal to two to the N minus one and then over two to the N. So then we're going to show our basis step is true. Our basis step would be for starting at one. So P of one is that we would have 1 over 2 to the first, so 1 over 2 to the first, and does that equal 2 to the first minus 1 over 2 to the first? Well, on the left-hand side, that gives me 1 half, and on the right-hand side, that gives me 2 minus 1, which is 1 over 2, which is 1 half. So the basis statement is true. Then we're going to do our inductive step. 
and I'm going to start with my inductive hypothesis, which is exactly what P of n was, except I'm replacing n with k. And then on this side, replacing n with k. So I'm going to assume that's true. And then my what to prove or what to show, whichever way you want to write that, is saying that I want this now to be k plus 1. And this would be 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1 over 2 to the k plus 1. So that's what I'm trying to show. So as always, I'm going to start with my inductive hypothesis because I know that it's true. Or I'm assuming that it's true. That's what the hypothesis says. 2 to the k minus 1 over 2 to the k. Now then the question becomes, what do I need to add to the left-hand side in order to make it look like this? Well, I would obviously just plug in k plus 1 for i, so I'm going to add 1 over 2 to the k plus 1. Now I have to do that to each side. So on the left-hand side, obviously the purpose behind that was that this together is now the summation as i goes from 1 to k plus 1 of 1 over 2 to the i. So on the left-hand side, I have what I want in my what to prove. For the right-hand side, obviously I need to do some math to be able to add these together. So how can I get a common denominator? Well, if I need my denominator to be the same, then I need my denominator on the left-hand fraction to be 2 to the k plus 1. So how do I turn 2 to the k to 2 to the k plus 1? I can multiply it by 2. And if I do it to the bottom, I have to do it to the top. So what does that give me? That gives me 2 to the k plus 1 minus 2, and that's by distributing the 2, and then plus 1. And then my denominator is now a common denominator of 2 to the k plus 1. So what can I do with my numerator? I can do some simplification. So 2 to the k plus 1 minus 2 plus 1 is 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1 over 2 to the k plus 1. So notice that is what I wanted it to equal, and it does equal that. So I have now proven this using mathematical induction. And don't forget that last sentence that I'm not writing just for the sake of time. Up next, we're going to take a look at proof by strong induction.